Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. Just going to get the lights. So, the big question with the Ottawa River flooding disaster is how much of this disaster, is this disaster just an act of God? You know, how much can be attributed just to factors beyond our control, and how much of the disaster is a result of human response, um, control of water levels from the northern dams, etc. You know, was, was human error involved? I have lots of questions. I don't have definitive answers. The analysis is continuing in this video. So I want to start, it's building on uh, some of the previous videos that I've done. So I want to start with this article in the Ottawa Citizen, May 11th, Egan, Kelly Egan, High and Dry, The Maddening Story of the Upper Ottawa River. So this is um, Stone Cliff, water was down significantly Sunday, May 7th. Now, the river between Rolfton and Mattawa was exceedingly low. So this trapper said he hasn't seen the water this low in 40 years. This was near De Riviera. Doug Antler runs this lodge. He said he's... He believes the downstream floods were partially man-made because two and a half feet of water was drawn down on his stretch on April 27th. Okay, by stretch he means a run of 70 kilometers long, a kilometer wide. Okay, so April 27th. So let's have a look at the uh, pulse first. Okay, this is the water pulse here. If I go here, uh, so let's come along to this is for the first peak here. Let's have a look here. April 27th. Okay, so right here, the water was dumped in this reservoir in the northern region. Okay, let me just move the pointer down. Then perhaps after a delay, you know, time, that water pulse made it down to the Britannia gauge and caused this pulse here. So if you calculate the area under this pulse, you have cubic meters per second on this axis, time on this axis, you can get a meter cubed of water. So how does this pulse area volume in terms of meter cubed of water compare to the capacity of the water that was dumped? And also right here, this spike here occurs. So if there was another, if the reservoir was filled up and then dumped again here, then could that have caused the second spike? So, th so let's have a look at the uh, geometry and see whether this is possible. So first of all, we need to go, you know, here's the region, here's Britannia Bay where the gauge is. Uh, this is the region in red from the clock to uh, the Dejo Shim. This is where Stone Cliff is, where that picture of the rocks on the bottom is. This is where the water dropped two and a half feet on April 27. Okay, so how would we calculate the volume of water in this basin? Well, the red line, which I sketched in, is a measure of the path length. And we can get the distance here, 66 kilometers, not quite 70 kilometers, which is in the Egan article. The average width is a kilometer in the article. The water was dropped 2.5 feet. So first of all, let's calculate the volume of the water. Here we go. Okay, so the volume of the water from the Egan article, the distance from clock to Dejo Shin, 67 kilometers, the average river width, one kilometer, the estimate from the Egan article, the drop, two and a half feet, convert that to meters, 0.762 meters. So the volume is just gonna be the uh, C31, which is the river drop times B28, which is the distance in kilometers times a thousand because it's in kilometers to convert to meters times B29, which is the river width, one kilometer times a thousand, thousand meters per kilometer. Okay, it gives us this number. So this is the volume of the reservoir for a two and a half foot drop. Okay, now what would that water do downhill? Well, first of all, how long would it take to get down to the Britannia gauge. Okay, so water leaving 
water leaving, if this was opened up here, water reaching here would reach the Britannia Bay gauge. Water from here would have to go that almost 70 kilometers, let's say a speed of 25 kilometers an hour roughly, that's about three hours. So the water from here would hit Britannia Bay gauge three hours later, two and a half, three hours later, depending on the speed, the average speed. Okay, so you're gonna have a pulse of water. This is in addition to the rain, it's in addition to water coming in here, etc. Okay, but you'd have this pulse of water. So let's have a look um, at some of the numbers. How long would it take this pulse of water to, okay, so from Mattawa, from clock to Dejoshin, 67 kilometers. If you're going 25 kilometers an hour, it would take 2.7 hours. Okay, um, the distance from Dejoshim to Britannia, 235 kilometers. You know, if you take that same speed, it would take about nine, say nine to 10 hours to arrive. Now, I think this speed is too high, so it you know, may, may take you know, a day or something or longer. It depends, like that pulse of water released April 27th, if that caused the spike, then it takes uh, you know, longer because the water is winding down through, you know, through hydro stations, et cetera, on its way down. If the river speed was slower, we're talking 3.35 hours for the pulse, um, and uh, the delay would be 12 hours here. So it really depends on the average speed. Okay, so the pulse. Let's look at the pulse on Saturday, May 6. So I'll just remind you that this is the this is a pulse. Okay, so let's have a look. We can go to here. So this is a pulse. So my working hypothesis is if that reservoir was dumped on the 27th, it caused this peak here. And then if it was dumped, recharged and dumped again, it could cause this peak here. Um, so let's have a look at that. So if we go to this guy here, basically if we go to this, this guy here, so I actually sketched it here in paint. So if this is a pulse in Ottawa, okay, um, let's say how much water is in the reservoir, how much would that create the excess pulse here? So we start with the baseline here. We have area A is a rectangle plus area B is a triangle. You know, we can look at the area going out 18 hours from where the pulse started, 24 hours, and uh, 12 hours. So let's have a look. Let's calculate the area under the curve because if we have cubic meters per second and we multiply by time, the time separation in seconds, that'll give us the volume in meters cubed and we can match the water in this pulse to the water from the reservoir. So let's see what that number tells us. Okay, so, so here we'll go back to my spreadsheet here. Okay, so if we take it from 24 hours along, we get area A, okay, we get area B, and we add them up, that's the area, and if I take this relative to this number here, I get 1.43. Okay, so there's more water in the pulse for 24 hours than there is in the basin. If I do 12 hours, there's a lot more water in the basin than the 12 hour pulse. If I do 18 hours in between, this ratio is closer to one. So what does that mean? What that means, and how do I calculate area A, for example? That's the flow rate difference in cubic meters per second times 24 hours times 60 minutes an hour times 60 seconds a minute. Okay, this is an area, this is the, uh, the area B is the triangle. So uh, here we go, uh, you know, it's one half base, 12 hours times 60 times 60 times height. This is the slope of that triangle times the uh, total height. Okay, and that gives me the height up um, 12 hours in. So I get these numbered, I add it all up. Okay, so basically what the conclusion is, is that for 18 hours, A plus B, this volume here of water equals the water in that reservoir. Okay, for a two and a half foot drop. Now that two and a half foot drop would vary over the length of the reservoir. Okay, but, you know, so the numbers actually, the numbers actually uh, check out here. Okay, now, to remind you of the pulse of water, 
you know, the rise was 20 centimeters in 102 minutes. So every centimeter of rise occurred in about five minutes for 102 minutes. And then every 12 minutes after that, there was another centimeter rise. So five centimeter rise in another hour roughly for a total of 170 minutes, the water rising a total of 25 centimeters. Okay, and the amount of water in that pulse is uh, comparable to what's in the dam. What's in the dam? What's in this reservoir, which is, consists of 70 kilometer length of river, almost a kilometer wide with a drop of two and a half. Now, one of the, two and a half feet. Now, one of the arguments was that, well, we had to dump that water because the water, because the choke point, okay, go back to here. Okay, so the choke point is clock. Apparently, I haven't checked the bathymetry yet. I will, that'll be on another video, but the bathymetry, apparently the water, the river could be even 100 meters deep here and then drop in depth down to about 10 meters. So there's a choke point here. So the idea is that the water would then, you know, this, the elevation here um, is 155 meters. Over here, it's 152. You know, I just went to the wrong point, 152. So, you know, if there is, if this water level is rising, right, then it will back up into Mattawa, right? But perhaps we could build some sort of channel, you know, put in a channel or something to run off that excess water to flood the farmland up here to save Ottawa for the next flood. You know, maybe that's a mitigation thing. Maybe that's not possible. I don't know. But the, uh, the point is, is that all the water was lowered here. It looks like this water dump occurred on the 27th. This whole region of water was dumped out, causing the first spike. And uh, the delay we could then calculate, right? If that's actually true, then we can look at the, this guy here, we can say from the 27th to where the spike started, you know, so that distance, that time, we could then calculate the average speed of the water moving through that 235 kilometers to the Britannia gauge, causing this region, which the area matches to the reservoir, and then this area, the air, it matches to the reservoir for 18 hours in. So the question is, is did we have to dump water from that um, dam? So let's have a look here. So the Dejo Shim Reservoir, this it says the lower limit is 149.4, the upper limit 152.4 meters. This is a meters above sea level. Now on May 5th, okay, the level on May 4th rather is 150.43, which is less than the maximum by, I call it the freeboard, 1.97. Okay, a lot of water released, 1.95 freeboard, 1.88, 1.79. Well, presumably, you know, we, we, we have an extra two meters of space, right? We have almost an extra two meters of space. So if we go back and look at our calculation here, this is for a 0.76 meter, we can store this much water, which is in the pulse, right? So we could have so to go up, we could have used up all that extra space in that reservoir. You know, it's almost three times bigger than this. Two times bigger than this, than this is 1.52, at least two times bigger than this. We could have stored all those pulses in that reservoir and prevented the pulses from occurring and re released the water slowly over time as the rain disappeared. So it appears to me from this data that, um, that this these pulses of water, which, which caused record amounts, if you look at the flow rates, okay, the flow rates are even worse than I thought in terms of, uh, let's go over here, if I can bring this up, nope, over here, the uh, flow rates, what the heck, where is my, nope my file seems to have disappeared that I was looking for. Okay, it's this guy right here. Nope, this guy. Here we go. Okay, th 